Higher resolution corresponds to lower number values. This can be confusing, but it's because resolution refers to the closest together two things can be, where you can still tell that part that they're two separate things. So for instance, take my fingers. If my fingers are really far apart, it's easier to tell that they're different fingers, right? But if they come together, they start looking like a single thing, especially if they're really, really far away or if you have really, really bad eyesight. Um, similarly, like point, if you see a light in the sky that could represent a single star or it could represent like an entire galaxy and so you're not able to resolve or tell apart the things that are really close together and kind of like the cutoff point of how close they can be where you can still tell that they're apart this is like the resolution limit and so when we're talking about structural biology when we're talking about the structures of proteins and other biomolecules what we're dealing with is we're talking in terms of resolution how close together things like the atoms in those complexes or in those proteins can be where you can still tell that they're separate. Um, so if you were to say, oh, like things are within a meter of one another, well, that's not going to be very helpful. But if you say, okay, well, things are within a millimeter of each other. Well, that's still not going to be really helpful, but it's better, right? If it was just like, if you're talking about my fingers or something. But in molecules, we're talking about really, 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 really tiny distances. So typically we're talking in terms of angstroms and one angstrom is 0.1 nanometer. So a nanometer is a trillionth of a meter. And so what we're talking about is like a billionth of a millimeter. This is really, really, really tiny distances. And if we, we need these tiny, tiny distances because the distances between the atoms, between those carbons and the oxygens and all of these things in these molecules are going to be really, really short distances. And in fact, the length of an average like carbon-carbon bond is going to be about 1.5-ish angstrom. And so 1.5-ish angstrom is going to be what we would refer to as like atomic resolution. So at this resolution, we're able to tell apart all the different atoms. Well, all, you can't really see the hydrogens typically because um, they have shorter bond lengths, but you're able to tell apart where those different atoms are. Okay, well, why does this matter? What well, matters because you don't directly get the location of the atoms when you collect structural biology data. So whether we're talking about like x-ray crystallography or cryoelectron microscopy, so cryo-EM, you're not directly getting the location of the atoms. You're getting like signal from those atoms as they interact with either the x-rays and crystallography or the electrons in cryo-EM. They're going to provide a signal and the signal is going to give you this map, which is kind of like this meshy thing. And then the scientists have to actually place the atomic model, like that pretty sticks and all those things like that. That's a model that they have to place into that map in a way that best fits the data. And so the, the better the resolution, the kind of crisper the map, the less sausage it is and the easier it is to pinpoint things within the map. Kind of similarly to how if you were to go and you went into your maps app and you were trying to find the location of something and so you put in um, something and you get like you're trying to look for like this specific pizza place in San Francisco say and you get a map of San Francisco well that's not gonna be very helpful if it doesn't have like it locate like it pinpoint or whatever but if you get like a street view of it, it's going to be a lot easier to find. Similarly, if you have higher resolution data, it's going to be a lot crisper. It's like getting that really focused map, um, really focused, like go to the street address versus like, oh, it's put it somewhere in San Francisco. And so the higher the resolution of the data, the closer together the distances, like the finer the distance between things. So you're able to see, like if you were to look at that scale bar on that map, it'd be a much smaller value. So smaller values, you can tell that these things are still separate things, even if they're close together. At a higher res at a higher number, so lower resolution, those things start kind of merging together. And so you can't tell, okay, well, does this carbon belong here? Does this carbon belong here? And so it's harder to place these atoms in this model. Um, and so sign there are ways, um, depending on which what your data collection method is, there's going to be differences in how the resolution is determined. And I'll talk more about this in a separate, more detailed post. But you typically just get one value, which is kind of like the overall resolution. And this is the resolution for the entire structure. But it's really important to know that the resolution at 
with at sites within the structure can actually vary. So some places in like a protein that are very flexible and dynamic, they can move around, um, or and or there are like on the surface. These are going to be harder to like see clearly. It's kind of like if you have a picture and people are like you're trying to take a picture and there's like of runners in a race. The runners might look blurred, but the spectators behind them might look nice and crisp. Similarly, in your protein structure, those really flexible dynamic regions, if they're moving around a lot, it's gonna be hard to get like an accurate location for them because, well, the location varies. So when the when a molecule is like has regions that are moving around, these regions we classify them as having like a high B factor. This is also called like the temperature or displacement factor. So if something has a high B factor, we're less confident about the actual location of its atoms. So it's really important that you know that the resolution overall might not be the same as the local resolution. And so you can have examples where regions of a protein are right next to each other and one of them is going to be like inside the protein, it's bound to other things, it's all stable and happy, and it's got a really, really low B factor. And so if you were to color by B factor, this would be like a blue, a dark blue. Whereas if the region was more flexible or dynamic, even if it's right next door to that other region, it might have a really low resolution, a really high B factor when it would be like colored red. Um, and sometimes when things have like, they're so loosey goosey and stuff, you're not even going to be able to see them. And these regions, if you can't see them, you can't model them in, at least not accurately. Um, and so then these places are left out of the model. And so we, you might see like unmodeled regions. This is really, really common to see in like loopy regions as well as like the ends of the protein. So like the N terminus and the C terminus. So even if those if even if that sequence is, and those atoms are actually present in the structure, you won't see them in the model because remember the model is just basically the scientist trying to fit those atoms into the data. And if the data isn't there, then you can't fit the atoms into that model. Sometimes you also see like partial structures modeled because it's easier to see the backbone and things like this. But I'm gonna talk more about the details of where this resolution comes from in another post and how you can actually analyze it in with software like Primal and stuff like that. I just want you to know that the overall resolution might not correspond to the local resolution. So especially if you really care about a region of a protein, um, before you go off and do a bunch of experiments or like start doing a whole like drug regime based on this one little finding, you want to make sure that the resolution at that specific site actually is actually strong. And remember, strong resolution is going to correspond to lower values because we're talking about the distance between two different things that we can still tell apart their different things. Um, and so the if we're talking about atoms, we want, if we want to really know where the atoms are, we need to be within like one and a half angstroms or so, so we could actually say, okay, well, yes, we can actually divide these. We can see that these are two separate things. So the whole numbers thing can get kind of confusing, especially if you think you're t used to thinking in terms of like structure, like on TVs and or um, resolution on things like TVs. Now with those, what we're talking about, the resolution there is going to be given in things like pixel density. Um, and so basically pixels are kind of like these little grids. Like if you were to take your TV screen and you were to separate it up and, and like grid it up, and then it has these little like squares where they can um, display like different colors or whatever. Kind of like one of those light bright machines. Um, basically, if you have a finer grid, you can then display finer details. Whereas if you have like more coarse, then you have to kind of average together the signal in this one thing. Um, and so if you have more pixels, then you get a higher density. So there you have a, oh, then you get a, like a crisper signal because you don't have to be averaging the signals. You can actually show these two different dots in two different like pixels rather than having them have to share a single pixel and then you can't tell them apart because you're limited to just showing like a single thing. So a higher number in like the digital realm with the TVs and all that stuff, that's going to be a higher number because that's talking about like pixel density and that sort of thing. But in crystallography and cryo-EM and NMR and all these different structural biology things, resolution is going to be the smaller the number, the better. So smaller number, 
higher resolution and atomic resolution is going to be somewhere around one and a half angstrom. But typically the average of structures is around like two-ish for crystal structures, typically a little higher for cryo EM, but you're often, resolution isn't the only thing that matters. Um, and so not only is it that there's like, could be regions that have lower resolution, but also like sometimes proteins are just really dynamic. And so if they're really dynamic, then they're going to have more flexibility. And that doesn't mean that the structure can't tell you really, really cool things. Especially when you have like a complex, so multiple different proteins say. Having a low resolution structure can still be really, really valuable because you can tell the orientation of the different components of it um, in relationship to one another. And then if say you have higher resolution um, structures of those various components, you can kind of model them in based on on, like their overall shape in the complex structure. Also, because remember the model is, well, a model, even if you start with really, really great data, you still have to model things incorrectly. So you can have bad models in really, really nice um, data sets or better models in worse data sets when it comes to the actual quality of the resolution. And some of this depends on the software um, and some of this depends on like how much time the scientists are actually able to invest with going one by one through each of those different atoms and making sure that like the side chain is in the right orientation and all this various stuff. So bottom line, it's not just the resolution that matters, but the higher the resolution you the data is, the better the chance you have to get a good structure, a good model. And don't just think, oh, if it's res low resolution, it's not helpful at all. So basically lower numbers, you can find or tell things apart. You get a CRISPR map. You get that map that's zooming you in on the actual address rather than zooming you in on the city that the atom is located in type of thing. Um, also, don't be fooled by there's like this thing called the contour level. I'll talk more about it in another post. But basically, this is dealing with how like how much of the signal is actually displayed. So if you have a higher sigma value, this is basically saying only show me the best of the, the strongest signal, the signal that we're really sure isn't the noise. And so we can talk about this in terms of like standard deviations or sigma values away from the average value. So I don't want to go into the details here but that average value the average signal is going to have a lot of noise in it and so you want to just choose the signal to display that's going to be the highest that you're most confident around, about but if you go too high then you can't even see anything and so the sigma value you can contour it to different levels you can display different amounts of the signal and this is going to then if you display too much so if you go too low a sigma too close to the average you're going to get a lot of that noise but if you go to a higher sigma you're going to get less of the noise but also less of your signal and so that's another way why these maps may, might look different you might see more more of it or you might see less of it that sigma that contour level that is just adjusting the what's displayed and not touching the underlying data one final note is that those values of the data what you're seeing is basically you're seeing evidence from where the atoms in the molecules are. In extra crystallography, this is going to be electron density um, because the x-rays, when they interact with the atoms, they're going to like diffract and stuff. Basically, they kind of like give off these weight, like the waves get scattered and then they interact together and they give you this dot. Bottom line is this map is going to represent kind of like the location of the electrons, but this map itself, it's not directly the evidence. It's still created from that diffraction pattern from that collection of spots you saw from the x-ray. So there's still some, um, there's still like um, computational stuff that goes into finding it. So it's not like a raw, raw signal, but it's, it's closer to like the actual experimental data, direct data than it is, than is the model that you place in. With cryo-EM, what you're dealing with is like a Coulomb potential. Basically the, elect the um, electrons that you use for cryo-EM, so instead of shooting x-rays at a molecule, you're shooting electrons. These electrons are going to actually interact with like the charge of the molecule. So they're not going to interact um, so it doesn't just depend on the electrons. And so this makes it so that you're not directly seeing like the electron density. What you're seeing is the Coulomb potential. And so these maps look a lot similar, but they're actually showing you slightly different things. 
but both of them are kind of showing you the overall location of the atoms, but not the atoms themselves. And they don't tell you like what atom goes where. And this is where you have to actually model in those atoms. And so hopefully that helped you understand the basics of resolution and um, keep an eye out for that other post. So I'll link to it here when it's done, um, where I'll actually show you how you can go and check out the resolution in structures as well as where this resolution is coming from. Um, and so unlike with the screen where it's coming from the number of pixels, here is coming from the quality of the sample, the, um, the ability of the detection method, and also the capabilities of the software for actually processing the data and being able to tell what is signal, what is real from the structure, and what is actually just noise. So, hope that helps.